Hello, I'm James Holland and I'm a historian of the Second World War. History Hit is a bit like Netflix, but purely for history. And we've got hundreds of hours of historical documentaries going all the way back to classical times, right through to the Cold War and beyond. Use the word war stories, all one word, for a massive discount when you join up. Since the turn of the 20th century, technology has developed exponentially, along with mankind's ability to kill on a devastating scale. The Great War witnessed unspeakable horror as weaponized chemicals emerged from factory assembly lines. As the world sunk deeper into its second global conflict, remote-controlled bombs rolled onto the battlefield, sowing the seeds for the future of warfare. Splitting the atom birthed the nuclear age, as rocket engines evolved to deliver destruction to enemies across the globe. Nuclear, chemical, robotic, and remote. These killing machines are the tools of ultimate annihilation. The weaponization of chemicals introduced the world to a more controversial type of warfare. Weapons unable to be heard and often unseen, destroying their victims from the inside out. Denounced as war crimes, chemical weapons are a tempting prospect for those determined to impose agony upon their enemy. The Great War was a conflict of brutal innovation. Dragging the world into the 20th century, the war of mechanization and killing technology wrought destruction on an unprecedented scale. For the first time in history, chemicals would be turned into weapons for widespread use, leading historians to refer to it as the chemist's war. Around 50 poisons were tried and tested, but the two most widely produced were chlorine and phosgene. In April 1915, Allied forces struggled to hold the 16-kilometer line in Ypres, western Belgium, against a determined German army. In the early evening of the 22nd, a yellow-green cloud began drifting towards Allied trenches, thought to be a smokescreen to cover advancing German infantry. As the cloud descended, troops began choking, the poisonous fumes destroying their lung tissue. As panic set in, some ignored orders and ran, unknowingly worsening the effects on their bodies. As their eyes burned and mouths frothed, the increased breathing caused the toxic gas to saturate their respiratory systems. The 168 tons of chlorine unleashed by the Germans opened up a six kilometer gap in the Allied line, with asphyxia, tissue damage and blindness attributing to 6,000 casualties. Too stunned by the success of their attack, German troops failed to advance and the line was quickly closed by Allied reinforcements. Chlorine had initially been used on its own. However, covering the nose and mouth with a damp cloth considerably lessened the effects. To beat these countermeasures, Germans began mixing it with the denser and more potent phosgene. Responsible for around 85% of chemical weapons fatalities during the war, phosgene was a choking agent that caused victims to drown in their own bodily fluids. The deadly chemical mix was quickly developed by both sides, with artillery shells, mortar projectiles and aerial bombs spreading the cocktail over enemy territory. By the end of the war, 124,000 tons of chemical agent had been used to terrify or neutralize enemy troops, leading to 100,000 deaths and over 1 million casualties. Chemical warfare had arrived. The Japanese capital of Tokyo, a thriving metropolis populated by over 13 million people, home to one of the busiest railway systems in the world. 
During morning peak hour service on March 20, 1995, a series of coordinated chemical attacks were launched on the Tokyo subway system using one of the most volatile nerve agents in existence, sarin. Formulated in 1938, sarin was discovered by German scientists creating pesticides. While it was produced by the Nazi regime during World War II, it was never used on Allied forces. In its purest form, sarin is 26 times more deadly than cyanide. A weapon of mass destruction, a single drop can kill an adult. On the morning of the Tokyo attacks, members of the doomsday cult Aum Shinrikyo released litres of sarin on several busy train lines. As carriages pass through strategic stations, cult members drop plastic bags filled with liquid sarin. The bags were punctured with the sharpened tips of umbrellas releasing the liquid that eventually evaporated and spread. Even at low doses, the colourless, odourless liquid can kill within 10 minutes of exposure. Whilst paralysing lung muscles and causing asphyxiation, sarin causes nerves to fire constantly. The victims convulse and foam at the mouth as their lungs secrete fluid. During the Tokyo subway incident, 12 people were killed and more than 1,000 injured in one of the deadliest coordinated attacks since the close of World War II. A waxy substance that bursts into flame when it comes into contact with the air, its thick blanketing vapours can conceal infantry positions and firing locations. Unleashed as a chemical weapon, its intense heat burns bodily tissue to the bone, and excessive exposure to its thick smoke can cause bones to disintegrate and organs to fail. First used by the British Army in grenades in the early 20th century, white phosphorus soon travelled across the Atlantic. During the interwar period, the US Army began training its forces in the use of white phosphorus, generating smoke screens to conceal advancing troops. White phosphorus was soon developed into an offensive weapon. Self-igniting Molotov cocktail type grenades were lobbed at enemy tanks, blinding the vehicle's optics and forcing the crew to abandon their armoured protection. Mortar batteries of phosphorus shells were used to clear enemy positions. As white phosphorus activates, incandescent particles stick to whatever they strike, fiercely burning deep into the skin and clothing, as long as the phosphorus has an oxygen supply. In 1944, after the Allies successfully stormed the beaches of Normandy, American troops rushed onwards to secure the port city of Cherbourg. The capture of the city would allow essential weapons and supplies to reach them in France. The Battle of Cherbourg raged for almost a month whilst American troops showered the German army with mortar rounds, 20% of which were white phosphorus. wreaking havoc among German troop concentrations and breaking up infantry attacks, the white phosphorus mortars rained down on Cherbourg. By the time Cherbourg was liberated on the 30th of June, one single battalion had fired 11,899 white phosphorus rounds into the city. The spirit of victory, having carried us through the landings into the Cherbourg Peninsula, will carry us on to Berlin itself. The offensive was a crushing blow to the Nazis, resulting in the deaths of 8,000 German troops and the capture of 30,000 more. Throughout the brutal Vietnam War, US troops battled the invisible Viet Cong, who used thick jungle cover to conceal their positions. In an attempt to expose the North Vietnamese, the American military resorted to chemical intervention. For almost a decade, fleets of cargo planes took to the sky, saturating more than 5 million acres of landscape with 75,700,000 litres of herbicides. Amongst the chemical cocktails was the notorious Agent Orange. Claiming that Agent Orange was purely a defoliant and harmless to humans, the US government directed the decimation of 500,000 acres of crops 
and 3,000 villages across southern Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. But the herbicide was far from safe, containing TCDD, a chemical described as the most toxic molecule ever synthesized by man. Agent Orange was responsible for a myriad of cancers, skin disorders, nerve damage and birth defects. In humans, TCDD takes up to 20 years to break down, while in infected soil or waterways, it can have a half-life of more than 100 years. More than four decades after the war ended, the side effects of Agent Orange are still being felt. As many as three million Vietnamese people are still suffering side effects, as are millions of veterans and their families. In 2004, a Vietnamese citizens' victims' rights group filed a class action lawsuit against 30 manufacturers of Agent Orange, claiming it violated international law. The courts ruled that Agent Orange was not intended for use on humans, and ultimately, it was ruled not to be a chemical weapon. In 1935, a border dispute in European-dominated Africa would lead Mussolini to launch the second Italo-Ethiopian War. When an Italian pilot was captured and killed by Ethiopian troops, stories of his torture prompted Mussolini to authorize retaliation. Dropping toxic gas, causing over 100,000 casualties. Developed by the Imperial German Army in World War I, the toxic cocktail of carbon, sulfur, chlorine and hydrogen was called mustard gas for its yellow colour and mustard-like odour. While mustard gas had little immediate effect on its victims, within 24 hours it produced chemical burns, subjecting victims to excruciating blistering of the skin, eyes and lungs. The toxin liquefied tissue and killed mucous membranes, leading to painful pus-filled blisters, respiratory failure, and temporary or even permanent blindness. When more than 50% of a victim's skin had been burned, mustard gas attacks could be fatal, initiating a slow and agonizing death that occurred weeks after exposure. As World War II loomed on the horizon and the carnage in Ethiopia still in the minds of Britons, the country lived in fear of gases dropped during air raids. Gas masks went into production for the entire population. Exposed as is this country to the most severe peril from the air, it is only right that the civilian population should have sufficient gas masks free and available to meet any emergency. At the outbreak of the war, 38 million masks were distributed in a door-to-door -door program. When the wearer of a gas mask breathed in, air would pass through a cloth filter containing disinfectant and charcoal. The activated charcoal would bond with the gas and stop it from passing through, requiring the filter to be changed before the mask was used again. Gas masks became a common sight throughout England. Carry your gas mask because you never know where you'll need it. Now to dance hall in Streatham and it's on with the gas mask and the dance. Thankfully, no gas attacks on Britain eventuated, and the masks were never called into action. In 1993, the United Nations adopted the Chemical Weapons Convention, a treaty banning the use of mustard gas and other chemical agents in warfare. Robotic and remote, the view to a kill has advanced from the scope of a gun to a computer monitor kilometers away. Removing the soldier from danger, a new age of weapons has slowly arisen. Remote-controlled defense has evolved into autonomous offense as the next generation of killing machines wield increasingly destructive power. Technological advances in the 21st century have seen unmanned battle bots performing dangerous and deadly activities. Entering booby-trapped lairs, locating IEDs, or scouting combat zones, they can go where the flesh and blood soldier cannot. Primarily used for bomb disposal, the Foster Miller Talon family was first deployed in 2000. Within its first four years, it had undertaken over 20,000 separate missions. 
Tracked military robots use sensors that detect the environment and can be programmed to automatically respond to their situation or wirelessly controlled by trained troops. These highly mobile robots can traverse nearly any terrain to eliminate threats. Beginning life as a defensive tool, these military robots have evolved for battle deployment, capable of lethal force. Fitted with an array of deadly weapons, including machine guns, grenade and rocket launchers, they've paved the way for a new generation of killer robots. Wielding even heavier firepower, the multi-purpose unmanned tactical transport. Named MUT for short, this force multiplier places heavy weapon systems, once reserved for armoured cavalry, into the hands of infantry. A single MUT can be equipped with an M240 or M2.50 calibre machine gun, a weapon that would normally require a team of five troops to carry when travelling on foot. A remote weapon station enables a gunner to operate Mutt's machine gun from any position of safety. The station provides 360 degrees of coverage, as well as stabilizers that keep the gun level whilst travelling on any terrain. The integration of heavy tactical robots within platoons will provide soldiers with unprecedented firepower and protection on the 21st century battlefield. In late 1940, the Nazi Wehrmacht recovered the prototype of the miniature French tracked vehicle. Harnessing its potential to deliver high explosives, they produced the world's first robotic soldier, the Goliath tracked mine. The forebear of modern military robotics, Goliath was a remote controlled tracked bomb. Measuring less than a metre wide, its resemblance to a miniature tank earned it the nickname beetle tank from the Allies. About half a mile of cable is connected to the tank by which the operator guides it to the target and fires the explosive. The vehicle's cable was triple strand. Two cables were used to move and steer Goliath, while the third was used to detonate its explosive cargo. Destroying tanks, buildings, bridges and scattering dense infantry formations, the German engineered demolition vehicle could remotely deliver up to 100 kilograms of high explosives intended to strike terror into the hearts of Allied soldiers. There's no knowing what Hitler's going to try next. First used in 1942, more than 7,500 were deployed throughout the war's final years. However, they could often be rendered inoperative when artillery blasts severed their command cables. Due to its high production cost and disposable nature, it wasn't considered a great wartime success. However, the Goliath was instrumental in laying the foundation for post-war military robotics. In a new age of war, insurgents surveyed opposing military forces by concealing themselves in remote mountain areas or crowded urban centres. With these locations beyond the reach of many surveillance or weapons capabilities, new battlefield heroes have risen. Flying autonomously or via remote control, these airborne robots gather intelligence and conduct strikes without risking the lives of pilots. Commonly known as drones, UAVs have become essential weapons in counter-terrorism operations. The US government has stated that 70% of all Al-Qaeda operatives were captured due to the work of UAVs. Aerial drone technology had a slow beginning during the Second World War, but throughout the 50s and 60s, pilotless aircraft became increasingly used for battlefield reconnaissance. Able to stay aloft for up to an hour, the British Royal Artillery's Falconer would carry a camera over enemy territory before deploying a chute so the film could be recovered. As the jet fighter came to maturity, retired aircraft could be retrofitted with remote flying apparatus for live weapons training. Since 1998, the RQ-4 Global Hawk has functioned as an eye in the sky for the US Air Force. Operating at high altitudes, 
global hawks can survey up to 100,000 square kilometres of terrain daily. First deployed in Afghanistan, the jet-powered global hawk is purely a surveillance tool. Tracking the movement of insurgents and providing real-time imagery, it enables Air Force commanders to act on real-time data, informing the precise targeting of lethal weapons. With the ability to take off, fly and touch down autonomously, the Global Hawk holds world records for endurance and distance. A decade after the Global Hawk took to the skies, the MQ-9 Reaper became the first long-range UAV capable of conducting a deadly strike. It can fly for 14 hours, fully loaded with 900 kilograms of munitions that include air-to-ground missiles, infrared homing sidewinders and GPS-guided smart bombs. Operators stationed on the ground hunt for targets using multiple sensors, including an infrared camera for night missions. A real-time satellite link allows the operator's command to reach the drone in just 1.2 seconds. While effective in war zones where ground targets lack the fire to shoot them down, Reapers are not designed to withstand anti-aircraft defences or engage in air-to-air -air combat. The role of UAVs will continue to increase as well-equipped forces seek to remove soldiers from frontline danger. During World War II, the Nazi war machine was devastating the Allies with constant air raids and U-boat attacks. Hidden in bomb-resistant fortifications, the lairs of these killing machines were heavily protected by anti-aircraft weaponry, preventing piloted bombers from approaching. In 1943, in an innovative attempt to suppress these threats, the US developed a remote-guided superbomb. Operation Aphrodite was a secret program converting obsolete B-17 flying fortresses into remote-controlled killer drones. These obsolete aircraft have been modified for use as guided missiles, usable against either area or pinpoint targets. Stripped of all non-essential parts, war-weary bombers were outfitted with radio remote-controlled equipment. Targeting reinforced strategic sites such as U-boat pens and missile launch pads, the B-17 Aphrodite missiles were filled with Torpex, a torpedo explosive 50% more powerful than TNT. Weighing more than double their standard payload, a volunteer pilot and flight engineer took the drones up to 600 metres before transferring control to an accompanying mothership. Using cameras, viewing both the ground and the main instrumentation panel, the remote pilots could navigate. After successfully turning over drone control, the two-man crew would arm the payload and parachute out of the cockpit. The mothership would then direct the missile to the target. This missile can be classified as a super-suicide attack plane without the expenditure of personnel. The remotely controlled missile is good for pinpoint accuracy. Whilst an innovative effort, the control and detonation systems were often prone to failure. The radio navigation aboard half of the Aphrodite drones faltered and the program was closed before the end of the war. This aerial robot can penetrate enemy airspace, gathering essential intelligence for forward missions. When faced with an enemy threat, it has the lethal capability to launch an autonomous attack. Northrop Grumman's Experimental X-47B. The future of naval aviation, the X-47B can undertake semi-autonomous surveillance and strike missions before returning to base. The first ever pilotless aircraft to take off and land from a carrier, development is underway to turn the prototype into a battlefield-ready aircraft. This flying robot speeds through the skies at Mark 0.9. An evolution of the B-2 bomber, its shape makes it the stealthiest unmanned aircraft in history. In April 2015, the X-47B completed an autonomous aerial refueling. 
free of restrictions such as pilot fatigue or limited fuel, this next-gen UAV has unprecedented operational reach. Built for 21st century combat, the X-47B is the future of air power and unmanned killing machines. On the 6th of August 1945, a B-29 Super Fortress dropped an untested uranium bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. For the first time in history, nuclear weapons had been unleashed on a population. The device, with an explosive force equal to 14,500 tons of TNT, decimated 90% of the city. More than 129,000 people were killed in the blast, most of them civilians. Demanding Japan's total surrender, American President Truman issued a horrific ultimatum. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. A second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. And less than a month later, Japan surrendered. The world was blasted into the age of nuclear warfare, an age haunted with the threat of ultimate annihilation. After German scientists split the atom in 1938, physicists across the globe immediately realized the potential of weaponizing the nuclear fission process. In Adolf Hitler's thirst for world domination, he became fixated with harnessing this new technology establishing the German Nuclear Weapon Project, a clandestine research program to develop the atomic bomb. So terrifying was the thought of Germany possessing a weapon of such magnitude, Albert Einstein signed a letter to the President of the United States warning of the potential horror. Banding together in secrecy with her allies, the US entered the race to harness the power of the atom, creating the first fission bomb. Hidden deep in the New Mexico desert, the Manhattan Project brought together some of the most brilliant minds from across the globe. Many of the scientists working on the project had fled Germany in the decade prior, Jews who'd been persecuted under the Nazi regime. All too aware of the consequences of failing to beat Hitler to nuclear weaponry, scientists and engineers worked furiously to produce a nuclear fission bomb. The initial 1938 discovery revealed that breaking the nucleus of uranium-235 into two parts produced 200 million times the energy of the neutron used to trigger it. At the time, the Manhattan Project was the world's largest industrial enterprise. This was a hidden American Main Street, center of a thriving community, population 78,000, that never appeared on any map. In 1945, after three years of research into atomic technology, the Manhattan Project produced an implosion-designed plutonium device nicknamed the Gadget. No one had ever attempted to detonate an atomic bomb before, and if it was successful, no one knew just how much destructive energy would be released. The Gadget was set for detonation in the Hornado del Muerto desert under the codename Trinity. Smoke clouds rose to 40,000 feet. Will this power, now available to man, bring another, even more suicidal war upon us? With a force exceeding 20,000 tons of TNT, Trinity's heat turned the desert sand into glass. The successful explosion changed the world forever, thrusting it into the atomic age. In July 1946, a fleet of more than 90 warships and submarines gathered off the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean. The ghostly fleet had no captains and no crew. Each vessel would serve their nation one last time in a test to further atomic knowledge under Operation Crossroads. The nuclear bombs unleashed on Japan catapulted the world into a new era of warfare. Determined to assess their fleet's resilience in the atomic age, the US Navy put itself to the test. 
Joint Chiefs of Staff have charged the Army and Navy Task Force with the responsibility of determining how atomic blasts will affect the structural design of ships, the reaction of aircraft and military ground equipment to these forces, to ascertain the effect of an atomic bomb exploding near the ocean surface and deep beneath it. The vessels were assembled at varying distances around the Coral Atoll some loaded with live animals to study the effects of the blast and radioactive fallout on living creatures. In addition to the guinea pig fleet, 150 other ships provided workstations and living quarters for the 42,000 people who participated in the tests. The first device was an airdropped plutonium implosion type nuclear bomb, similar to the one dropped on Nagasaki. And now it's time to go. Mission Crossroads has begun. Unloaded from a B-29 Superfortress, the bomb detonated 158 metres above the target fleet with a yield of 23 kilotons. The world's fourth atom bomb missed its aim point by 649 metres and the blast was far less devastating than anticipated. Following the disappointing results of the first shot, a second bomb was detonated 27 metres under the water. The stem of the atomic mushroom is a giant water spout. Water is pouring back in a stupendous deluge into the lagoon, a radioactive swirl about to overwhelm the ships at anchor. The radioactive spray caused extensive contamination and Operation Crossroads was terminated because of radiation concerns. However, the US continued to test nuclear weapons at Bikini Atoll for over a decade. At the outset of the 1950s, the Cold War arms race reached fever pitch, with the powers behind the Iron Curtain racing to harness nuclear technology. After the Soviet Union conducted a test detonation of their first fission bomb, President Truman fired back announcing that the United States would advance beyond the nuclear age and develop the world's first thermonuclear device. In November 1949, a letter between President Truman and the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission confirmed America's resolution to pursue thermonuclear power, arming America against any possible enemy. In contrast to fission, thermonuclear fusion is the combination of two or more light atoms into a larger one at extremely high temperatures. The energy released by fusion is three to four times greater than the energy released by fission. By 1952, the US government was ready to conduct Operation Ivy in the Pacific Marshall Islands. An enormous 73-ton structure had been constructed for the test detonation of the first ever full thermonuclear device. More powerful than any device before, the bomb was codenamed Mike. On the 1st of November, the world shook with the greatest explosion ever unleashed by mankind. This is the largest fireball ever produced. A tremendous upsurge of air from the detonation rapidly pushes up the Mike cloud. Again, nothing of this height and width has ever before been witnessed. Equal to 10.4 million tons of TNT, Mike's blast was 800 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The mushroom cloud rose 50 kilometers into the stratosphere and stretched out to 161 kilometers. Mike's fury obliterated the entire island of Lab, leaving an enormous crater where the island had once been. The world's inauguration into the thermonuclear age meant mutually assured destruction was now a real and present danger. Pilotless flying bombs can seek and destroy the enemy from any corner of the Earth. For the last century, missile and rocket technology has been pursued with an ardent fervor by powers around the globe. Once only capable of relatively short ranges, missiles would breach space and bring the world closer than it has ever come to ultimate annihilation. As the Soviet Union came even closer to achieving nuclear power, 
defending the skies against long-range bombers became a United States priority. A new weapon was needed to strike down airborne threats, resulting in the world's first operational surface-to-air missile, the Nike Ajax. The advent of the jet age meant aircraft could fly faster, further and higher than ever. Conventional anti-aircraft weapons were no match. In 1945, the US Army initiated Project Nike, a top secret air defense program to detect and counteract airborne threats. 250 missile sites were established across America, all housing radar and computer tracking systems. Accompanying launch areas stockpiled missiles in heavily fortified silos. These pictures, which have just been released by the United States Defense Department, reveal for the first time America's latest guided missile launching station. Project, until recently top secret, involves radar rockets, 20 feet in length, mounted directly onto launching frames, ready for instant firing. The program's first missile, Nike Ajax, could reach a maximum altitude of 21 kilometers, with a relatively short range of only 40. To supply a net of cover, bases were located close to areas of strategic importance. As jets conquered the sound barrier and ballistic missiles became more prominent, the Ajax's shortcomings became apparent. July of 1958 heralded the arrival of the Nike Hercules. Carrying both conventional and nuclear warheads, Hercules could intercept these new perils. Far superior to its predecessor, Hercules could travel at speeds of Mark 3.6 to strike targets 46 kilometers in the air up to 140 away. The Hercules missile could also be used in surface-to-surface -surface mode to destroy land-based targets. Typically armed with a W-31 nuclear warhead, these deadly deterrents had a 20 kiloton explosive force. What had begun as an air defense program had evolved into a weapon capable of delivering an offensive strike. As World War II came to a close, the world's superpowers drew back into their opposing corners. With both the Soviet Union and the United States determined to reign supreme, nuclear weaponry became the ultimate symbol of power. In order to launch defensive strikes against a Soviet attack, the US began placing nuclear missiles strategically throughout Europe. Arriving in Turkey in 1959, under the guise of commitment to Turkish defense, were the Jupiter medium-range ballistic missiles. The tension would initiate a chain of events that would bring the world to the brink of annihilation. The 15 Jupiter missiles scattered across five Turkish sites could travel 2,400 kilometers and deliver a nuclear blow to the Soviet Union. Tipped with a 1.4 megaton thermonuclear warhead, each Jupiter could reach its target in under 17 minutes. On October 14, 1962, a US military U-2 plane flying a reconnaissance mission over Cuba made a startling discovery. The Soviets had begun stockpiling their own nuclear arsenal within striking distance of America. Russian missile bases less than 100 miles from the United States. The Soviet gambit which threatens world peace. Equipped with their own medium-range missiles, Cuba, a staunch Soviet ally, now served as a launch point for strikes against the US. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union. Despite having their own Jupiter missiles in Turkey, President Kennedy viewed the Cuban stockpile as a direct threat to world peace. As the superpowers faced off against one another, both leaders faced the prospect of initiating nuclear war. On the 22nd of October 1962, President Kennedy launched a naval blockade of Cuba and called on the Soviet President Nikita Khrushchev to withdraw all nuclear weapons. 
As the world watched in fear, 25 Soviet ships, armed with further missiles and military equipment, steamed towards Cuba. In response, America initiated the fastest mobilization of US military forces in history, whilst the Strategic Air Command was ordered to DEFCON 2, ready to engage in nuclear war. On October 24th, as the world stood on the brink of annihilation, the Soviet cargo ships began reversing course. During secret negotiations, Kennedy and Khrushchev came to an agreement. The Soviets would remove all missiles from Cuba, while the US promised never to invade the island and secretly remove the PGM-19 Jupiter missiles from Turkey. The 13 days of tension came to a close as the world breathed a sigh of relief. On the 13th of June, 1944, one week after the Allied landings in Normandy, London was subjected to a terrifying Nazi retaliation. Raining horror from the sky, a new weapon had arrived, the V-1 flying bomb. The Bergel Tungswaffe 1, German for revenge bomb, was the world's first cruise missile. Due to its distinctive buzzing sound, the Allies called it the doodlebug. The signature noise was produced by the V-1's pulse jet engine, the very first employed on a production aircraft. A series of shutters at the front of the engine ingested air, whilst drawing in a spray of high octane gasoline. The mixture was then ignited, causing a buildup of pressure that forced the shutters closed. The jet exhaust was then funneled out the tailpipe, thrusting the missile forward. As the pressure dropped, the shutters would open and the process would repeat, cycling 50 times per second. Guided by an internal gyro compass and steered by rudders, when the V-1 reached its target, the engine would stop and the V-1 dropped in ominous silence. Simple and cheap to produce, England's southeast was subject to more than 100 a day. In less than a year, doodlebugs would claim the lives of 6,000 people, wounding three times that again. The V-1s, however, were not infallible. Their signature noise alerted anti-aircraft batteries. And their relatively slow speeds could be matched by British fighters. For the benefit of those who've suffered from flying bombs, here's a picture of one about to be killed by an RAF fighter. A drama entitled The Death of the Doodlebug. By August 1944, 80% of V1s were being destroyed before reaching their targets. Of the 9,521 doodlebugs fired at England, only 2,500 reached London. But the Nazis had even more vengeance weapons in store and remained determined to punish Britain with every strike. A mere three months after unleashing the V-1 revenge bomb, the Wehrmacht would strike with a deadlier missile they would call retribution. Impervious to Allied countermeasures, falling at supersonic speeds in a steep trajectory, the V-2 rocket could not be stopped. In 1927, the German Amateur Society for Space Travel was already exploring the potential of liquid fuel to propel rockets into space. When the National Socialists came to power in 1933, the rocket was instantly recognised as a weapon full of destructive possibilities. Society member Werner von Braun was adopted into the Nazi fold and work began, leading to the world's first long-range ballistic missile. Launching in 1944, the V-2 travelled at three times the speed of sound. Climbing to an altitude of 176 kilometres, it blasted out of the Earth's atmosphere. For the first time, the boundary of space had been conquered, not in the name of exploration, but weapons innovation. For eight months, the German Wehrmacht battered the Allied forces with over 3,000 V-2 missiles, killing 9,000 civilians and military personnel. 
This brutal weapon not only claimed the lives of those it struck, it was also responsible for the deaths of as many as 12,000 concentration camp prisoners who were beaten or starved to death while working to produce the bombs. In 1945, as Germany collapsed, Werner von Braun and his team surrendered to the Americans and were resettled under Operation Paperclip. Along with their new citizens, America brought back captured V-2 missiles. At the new long-range proving grounds in Florida, they've been experimenting with a German V-2 which carries a smaller missile on its nose. Incidentally, this is believed to be the first successful horizontal flight by a long-range guided missile. The technology would prove crucial, not only to US missile development, but to America's journey to space. October 4th, 1957. The world listened in wonder as the Soviet satellite Sputnik 1 launched into Earth's orbit. Public perception of the United States as the world's technological superpower was shattered. Desperate not to fall behind in the Cold War arms race, America surged ahead with missile development, creating a revolution in military and aerospace technology. Named for the mythical Greek god of endurance and astronomy, the strategic missile, 65 Atlas, was America's first intercontinental ballistic missile. After World War II, US military technology was bolstered by the arrival of some 1,500 German scientists, engineers and technicians, each with expertise in different aspects of weapons technology. Operation Paperclip was an enormous success for the United States, resulting in the creation of the Redstone family of rockets, which included the first short-range missile to carry live nuclear ammunition. Desiring a long-range missile, development of Atlas began in 1946. Over 10 years later, Atlas had become the largest military development program in America's history. And in 1958, the first successful test flight was launched. At Cape Canaveral, an Atlas missile blasting off to become the biggest man-made Earth satellite so far. Payload and carrier together weigh nearly four and a half tons. Carrying a thermonuclear warhead over 100 times more powerful than the bomb dropped over Nagasaki, Atlas's role as a weapon of war lasted only six years. However, the technology behind Atlas would evolve into one of the world's most significant satellite launch vehicles. Joining the space race in 1962, Atlas became part of Project Mercury, the United States' first human spaceflight program. On the 20th of February, Atlas launched Friendship 7, a spacecraft carrying astronaut John Glenn. Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth, circling an additional two times. Oh, that view is tremendous. By the end of its military service in 1965, Atlas had carried four Project Mercury astronauts into orbit, placing the US on equal footing with the Soviets in the Cold War space race. The United States' only land-based nuclear weapons, these intercontinental ballistic missiles have served as strategic deterrence for over half a century. Delivering a 170 kiloton thermonuclear warhead, the Minuteman missile can be launched in just 60 seconds. Initiated in the early 1960s, the Minuteman concept was revolutionary, providing the US with quick reacting missiles that could strike targets almost 10,000 kilometers away. Launched from remote, fortified silos, the Minuteman missiles were the first to be stored beneath the Earth's surface to protect them from enemy attack. Minuteman 3 was the first missile to contain several warheads, each one capable of being independently aimed at its own specified target. Beyond the Earth's atmosphere, the Minuteman's final stage fires three re-entry vehicles, each capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Hurtling toward Earth, 
they are armed in flight before each strikes an independent target. 450 Minutemen missiles are currently positioned across three bases in the United States, ready to launch after receiving a coded and authenticated message from the Office of the President.